In today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this. It's the father's pullover sweater. I'm not a father, unless you call the dogs and the cats, and sometimes Daniel calls me daddy. We're gonna be getting right into it. Let's go inside and warm up and let's begin. So Kitty and I were talking and today I'm presenting a men's crochet sweater. I don't really like doing wearables on tutorial format, but you insisted and I'm making my first ever men's sweater for me. You should know how to read patterns slightly. I'm going to go through the steps step by step, um, but it's very basic in the sense I'm going to walk you through verbally in the instructions, but I'm also making my sweater. So I'm going to show you how to get started, whether it's the base of the front, whether it's the sleeves, we'll do all the sewing and all of that fun stuff. And today is the men's sweater by yarnspirations.com. Now, if you've seen this in the past, you should know that there was a revision in February of 2023, and uh, we went through the sleeves and rewrote it for you so that it's a lot easier for you to be able to follow. So 10 cents if you want to pet my kitty. <laughs> kitty. This is close, close. So here's the pattern that we're going to be working for. It has been updated and you can have yourself a gay old time. What I've done is that I made most of the pattern already ahead of time. So this is the back. I still have to do the shoulder area, which I'm going to do on camera. But you can see it's just a, a rectangle that goes on up. And then we just change the rectangle shape midway through so that we can make room for the arms. And then we just are going to finish off there. So I have a front panel also done where I'm going to show you the shoulders on both sides. So that's probably going to be the longest part of the tutorial. And then once we have this done, it's going to be a great time. So this is what it is, and the cat has my yarn. So first step you're going to need to do is do a gauge check. If you go to the video description of here and click on the article where you can get the downloadable, the free pattern, I put a gauge check video there so you can be able to do that if you don't know how to do a gauge. That is so important, especially a wearable. It's not like it's a blanket where, you know, you can be off by a little bit and it doesn't matter. With clothing, it totally matters, including hats. So let's go through this pattern together. This is available from extra small to three extra large, and you're gonna notice that there's five sizes. There is parentheses involved in this, so whenever there's a decision to be made, you will notice that the parentheses will kick in. It should be able to do that, and the parentheses are always in the same order, which I'll show you in just a moment. So for the extra small to small, it is six balls of Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver, and then for the up to the three extra large size, it's eight balls. So if you're color, if you are colorblind, the order always stays the same. So let's flip the page and give you an example of the parentheses that you'll need to know. So right here, as we start with the smaller hook, because you'll notice that there's two sides of the hooks available, we're going to be using a five and a half millimeter size I and a six millimeter size J. These are just generic hooks that I found online. So what we have here is when there's a decision to be made, you'll notice, are you gonna chain 65, 71, 77, 83, or 89? You're going to determine that size that you want. So make sure that you take a measurement of the body to be able to determine which one you want. So this is extra small, medium, large, extra large, two to three X. So you will choose the size that you want. So what I did for myself is that based on my measurements, I was this size right here. So I decided that I'm gonna use that. So I went ahead in the pattern on my own copy that I had, and I circled the number that makes that for me. So if I was colorblind, it's just extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and two to three extra large. So it's always in that same order. So in round number two, or sorry, row number two, do you see that there's no parentheses? It means that all patterns are the same, or, or all sizes are the same in that instruction. So when the instruction changes, you'll notice that there is that information. So there's a lot of simi similarities between the, the front and the back and also the sleeves, and let's talk about that. You will notice that the front and the back has a ribbing on the base, which is done with a smaller crochet hook, so the five and a half millimeter size RI. Once you get to the main body, including the sleeve area, you're going to increase the hook to a size J, a six millimeter, but the information for the ribbing is, also, is done right here in the smaller area. So when you see sleeves in the future, it says 
I refer to the back instruction of creating the sleeve section with the new measurement that it's going to be given and the new chain count and then you'll be able to do that as well so you're going to notice that the similarities are pretty um, the same so let's go on the back of the page uh, the back of the pattern here on page number three and let's show you the schematic so this area here is being rewritten so you'll see a new version of this by the time that it goes online and so we have a total of four pieces that we have so we have two sleeves obviously okay and then you also have a front and the back you'll notice that the front is dipped down more here than the back and the back crawls more up the back of uh, the spine higher and then just does a little bit of shoulder work and you're leaving an indentation here where the sleeves will connect into which i'll show you how to do that when we get there so you will notice that the front and the back are really quite simple what I decided to do for myself is that because I am aware of how to do wearables is that I try to do all the easy stuff first and then worry about the complicated stuff later if there is such a thing. So I noticed in the pattern that the front and the back are very much alike until you get to this moment right here. So everything down is the same on the front and the back. So what I did is that I did the front and the back to this level here for the front and then the back one I went a little bit higher where it then flattens off so I did all of the the easy stuff nice and easy and then I also did both of the sleeves uh, off camera as well which I will um, talk you through when we get there and then the neck band is then added to the end of this thing so let's uh, begin and let's um, go back to the instruction and let's start talking about the ribbing and we're going to do the back panel first and then the front uh, which you will understand how to do and then we're going to shape armholes and all of that jazz so without trying to overcomplicate the system i did the back and the front as i mentioned all the way up until i got close to the neckline and then we're going to do the shoulder areas that will that are listed here individually and i'll show you how to do each one of those as we go so the back here is following this instruction and then once the ribbing is done this is all the ribbing at the base of the sweater then the body of it is then going to be just going back and forth until the whole thing measures 16 and a half inches ending on the wrong side ws is wrong side i'm going to show you that you should list uh, or label your pattern right at the very beginning of what is the right side and the wrong side so that you'll know how to put this thing together you're then going to shape the arm holes and we're going to get that you will see that there's a decision on how many stitches to skip over so follow the pattern for that and then you're going to continue to work even until it is approximately, in my case, it was 26 inches, so you could have a different size. But do you see this double asterisk right here? I want you to pay attention to that because that, from this double asterisk up here, is the actual front of the panel. So when you see the front, it says, work from double asterisk to double asterisk. So when you do the front, you're gonna restart this all again, and you're gonna stop right here, and then you're gonna jump on over here, and it says, to work the back until it measures a total, in my case, 23 and a half inches. So you can see that the size differential from the back to the front is different. So the front is more lower for the neckline and higher in the back for the back of the spine. And then once that is done, then you're going to start doing all your shaping and everything like that. So I'm going to rely on you to be able to do that, but I'm gonna get yourself started right now and I'm gonna demonstrate how we do the ribbing. And then I'm going to demonstrate how you should mark the right side. And then you're gonna follow this up and we're gonna then meet at the top of the shoulders for both of the uh, sections as we go. So let's begin the ribbing section at the bottom of the sweater, whether it's front or back. So let's start either the front or the back, and it can also be the base of the sleeve. So go to the pattern and get the chain count that the size that you're working on. In my case, I use 77, but you could be doing the other sizes. So I need you to chain in the count that is suggested for the sleeves, it's also a different number. So if you wanna go take a look at that, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And then get your beginning chain done. And then we're gonna meet and do the foundation row next. So let's do the foundation row. This will get ourselves started. I need you to go fourth chain from the hooks. So one, two, three, and go fourth. And when you put this in, I want you to put it in so that when you wrap the hook, you're gonna go into the fourth chain, but you're gonna have two strands on top. Usually I always tell you to go into the back hump of the chain. In this case, I don't want you to and I want you to double crochet there. And you need to work down your chain, making sure that you always have the two strands on top, one on the bottom, and you're just double crocheting all the way across. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna have you do something else. 
for all of the panels, when you start the ribbing, I want you just to stop here and I want you to place a stitch marker. In my case, it's just spare yarn. And I want you just to loop it around the post. And whenever you see that, you'll always know that you're on the right side of the work. So this is the side that would be visible if you were wearing the sweater. So please continue to double crochet all the way down your chain. So I'm coming all the way to the end of the chain. So obviously it'll be bigger, even if it's a sleeve, it'll be bigger than this. And you're gonna go right to the very end and you're going to turn. So this is the foundation row and we're now going to start officially row number one in just a moment. Let's begin the first row and I'm gonna give you a piece of advice that I used throughout the whole sample that I made. Usually what happens is that you chain two, you skip the first one that it's sitting out and then you play with the next one. I always find that the chain two is something that I lose and I end up missing the stitch in the future. So what I do for myself whenever this is an issue, because this is my own personal issue that I have, is that I chain one and I know that chain two equals a half double crochet. So I just half double crochet in the first one. So I have a fresh stitch right in that very first stitch instead of just a chain two. Then the next instruction, whether it could be just a half double crochet or a front post or a back post, it just looks like it aligns. That's what I recommend to you. So, but this is first row here of the foundation of the ribbing. So what I want you to do in the next one, you're gonna do a front post, double crochet. So wrap the hook and going round and then just double crochet around the front post. And the next one is a back post. So wrap the hook, come from the back and through the back and you're just doing a back post double crochet and you're going to alternate between the two stitches going all the way to the other side and this is what creates the elasticity that you'll see within the sleeves and also the base of your sweater on the front and the back so please alternate between the front and the back posts and I'll meet you on the very last stitch where we're just going to do a half double crochet in a moment if your stitch counts are right, the stitch before the last one is going to be a front post double crochet, and then the very last one in the turning chain should be a half double crochet in that spot. And that was row number one. So you can see that the loose end here is on the other side, so I'm looking at the wrong side right now, and now we're gonna flip and do the second row, and we're gonna be alternating between these two rows until we get the edging done for the ribbing. Let's begin row number two. Now the ribbing is quite easy to maintain. You just have to see what you have to do. So you have to chain one in my case, it's my alternate uh, approach. And then I half double crochet in the first one. But if you wanna chain two and skip the first one, that's your business. So the next one I can see it's in behind. So I wanna keep it in behind. So I'm gonna make that as a back post double crochet. And then the next one here is gonna be a front post double crochet. And I'm just gonna match exactly what I see and I'm gonna go all the way across for row number two. And I want you to do this all the way across and I'll be back here in just a moment. So when you get all the way across, it looks like there's two stitches, but it's a chain one and a half double crochet in the first one. So make sure that you only go into the last one here as a half double crochet. So what we have to do is alternate between rows number one and two, and we have to get to two and a half inches for all sizes, that's in the height, and you have to end on a wrong side. So I've just ended on the right side. Do you see this? So when I go to end, I should be over here so that this is on the back and I should be right here. So please continue rows number one and two and, and get your tape measure and measure two and a half inches. And then therefore that's when you're gonna start the body of whether it's your front or the back or the sleeves. So I technically only did one row from when I last left you. And so it's approximately gonna be about two and a half inches. You have to end on a wrong side. So this has to be uh, on the wrong side. So this is the right side by turning it over. So if I, add, if I go back across and again, I'll probably get to three inches. So this is close to the two and a half for me to be satisfied. So whether it's the sleeve or the front and the back, you have to determine that. And you may want to make a note that how many rows you did so that you get it right each and every time for all of the pieces, because they're all going to be the same. So let's now move to the body of the front or the back. So for the sleeve and also the front and the back, you're gonna change out your hook and you're going to go to the bigger one of a size J, a six millimeter, and then turn your work. 
So now we're gonna be creating a box formation for the front and the back, and you'll notice that the sleeves will literally get wider pretty much almost instantly after a couple rows. So you're going to begin the front and the back it's the same way, so you can either chain two, which will count as the first stitch, but in my case, I wanna continue my, my theory of what I do, I chain one, half double crochet in the first. And then in each stitch all the way across, you're going to put in a half double crochet. So you're getting yourself started. Now because the hook is bigger, you're going to notice that this will bowl out. It will not stay as a flat, the same width as, this, as the cuff area um, that you have. And make sure you don't forget about that last one. It's right on the edge here when you do it the way that I'm showing you. So it looks like it's going a little too far, but it's not. And so then you turn your work and then you just continue to go back and forth with these half double crochets. So just starting in the first one, going all the way across. So you need to go back and forth to get a certain height, which I'm gonna take you back to the pattern in just a few moments from now. And then I'm going to take you up on where you have to do the reduction in order to make room for the armholes. Okay, so you're gonna go back and forth just with these half double crochets. I'm gonna take you back to my real sample in just a few moments, because that's where I left it on there so I can do it with you on camera. And that's where we're gonna begin the journey next. And don't forget the very last stitch is right here. So you're going here and here. Can always be a little questionable. And you see it's already turning a little wider than the cuff was. So let's go back to the instructions now. So right here is where we are. So we're just now going to go back and forth until it measures 16 and a half inches. That's all sizes are going to measure that. So it doesn't matter the size. So just keep going back and forth and you're gonna end on a WS, which is a wrong side. So you can tell by the stitch marker if you place it in. If you haven't placed it in yet, please do so. It'll be a lot easier for your life later. We're then going to move and we're going to do shaping of the armholes. This is going to be the same for front and the back as well. And the only difference is that once we get this established, the height of which that is gonna be after the armhole section is made differs between the back here and the front. So the back, you're going to go to this dimension, and then in the front, you're gonna to go to this dimension right here. So that's the neat thing about this, is that they're both the same. So what I've done for myself is that the back I already did um, just all the way to the end, but the front, this is where I've stopped so that I can show you how to shape the armhole, and then um, it's the same for both, and then you're just gonna to go to the height that you need. So let's begin to shape the armholes next. So as we begin to shape in the armholes, you're going to notice it says slip stitch in each of the next nine, 11, 13, 15, or 16. So you're going to slip stitch the number that matches the size that you want. Once you get that done, you're gonna chain two, which will count as the first stitch, and then half double crochet, leaving the final either eight, 10, 12, 14, or 15 stitches empty. So what you're doing is, essentially, let me get my pen, so here. So what we're doing here is we're taking a panel that looks like this at this moment, and what we're doing is that we're slip stitching over, and we're gonna create a panel that looks like that. And so that's all part of the same thing. So you're gonna notice I have a loose end here. I've just changed out my yarns just because I was running out on the one ball. So let's begin shaping the armholes. So once you're ready to shape both front and the back are the same way, so you're just gonna immediately um, just slip stitch. So just come into the very first stitch you normally would do, and you're going to slip stitch. In my case, it'll be 13. So I just go one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So right where we are now, so whether regardless if it was 13 or nine or 16, as it mentioned, you're then going to either chain two, which will count as the first stitch, or you can go back to what I do, just chain one, and then start half double crocheting yourself across. And so you're gonna do this and then it says, leave either the last eight, 10, 12, 14, or 15 stitches untouched. And that's the instruction that you're going to do based on your own size. So in my case, I'm gonna leave the last 12 untouched. 
here because there was technically 12 that you didn't use here because the 13th stitch was the first one that you started the half double crochet with. So please do this all the way to the other side and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm getting closer, so I have to leave the last 12. I have not counted, so I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I want to leave those 12 empty for me. Your case, it could be different, depending on the size that you're going for. So I'm just marking it with my hand here, and I want to get to that spot. So I have four more stitches to do. So we have 1, 2, 3, and four. Okay, so there should be 12 left. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So therefore that's done. So for both of the sizes now, you're just gonna turn your work and we're just gonna go back and forth on the new row that you just created that is short and technically missing all this on both sides. Let's turn our work and we're gonna talk about sizing. So as we start this new row, what we're going to do for the back, you're going to then continue back and forth until the whole project from the very base of where the ribbing started all the way down here. And you're going to get to a total of either 25 all the way to 26 and a half. Look at the pattern, get the height that you need. In my case, it was 26. For the front one, you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to only go to 22 and a half or 24. Again, look at the size, and then that's where you're going to stop. Do not fasten off any of the yarns because we still have to do the shoulder work for both sides of the front and the back. Okay, so both left and right shoulder individually, and then we're going to be joining that. So in my case, I'm working on the front right now, so I'm going to be meeting you back here. I'm doing the real sample after 23 and a half is done. Make sure that you look at the instruction and it says the information is on finishing on the wrong side. So when you go to finish, you make sure that you can see that the stitch marker, uh, wherever it is on your sample, in my case, this is the wrong side of the work because the stitch marker is here. So when I finish this row, the stitch marker should be upside down in on the underside of the pattern. Okay, so do that. So get your size that you need and I'll be right back in a few moments, but I have to do this off camera for now. So you can see that I have my section done. This is actually the front panel. The back panel will be taller in this section right here, which is fine. So I'm gonna go in the order of the instructions. So once you have your heights done, do not fasten off. And we're going to begin starting with the back panel first, and then I'll bring you back to the front panel. So we'll do um, the step-by-step -step for each of those before we uh, get on to doing anything else in this tutorial. So let's start on the back panel and let's start on the right shoulder next. So let's start in the back panel, right shoulder, the first row, we should be looking at the right side facing up. So if you follow it through, you should be right here and we're going to continue. So what we're gonna do is just do a section of the shoulder and then just go back and forth to we hit a certain height. Once we have that done and the instructions done, we're then gonna come back to the right side that you see right now and we're going to start over here and then go to this side. If we turn it around and start this side from the edge like this, the next row will be misaligned on the on the left here. So depending on which uh, tutorial that you're looking at. So this side would be misaligned if we start on the edge just like this one. So let's begin the first row and we're going to continue our journey and let's go back to the pattern real quick. So we're right here, the right shoulder, and we're going to begin and we're gonna chain two, which could be the first one or you can chain one and half double crochet in the first. And you're gonna do a half double crochet in each of the, the next 11, 12, 13, 14, or 16. Choose the size that you want. In my case, it'll be 13. And then you're gonna turn and then leave the remaining of the stitches all the way across the row empty. So once you turn from there, you only have this little section to work with at the top. And then the second row is just going to start and we're gonna do uh, half double crochets two together. And we're gonna be working even until we get to the bottom section here. So this case here, we have to go back and forth and then the whole panel will measure a total of 27 inches. So right currently, right now, um, if this was the back panel, you're currently at uh, 26 inches or this dimension right here. So where we finish is gonna be right here. So there's not gonna be much to it as you have saw in the schematic. Let's begin the first row. So let's begin the right shoulder. The cat's playing with the box behind me. She loves it so much she'll need a cigarette. So just chain one and half double crochet in the first if you don't want to do the chain two as counting as the first. So for consistency, I want a nice solid border. That's why I'm doing that. So I'm going to do that one. 
and we're going to then it says one half double crochet in the next either 11, 12, 13, 14, or 16. So don't include that as that count. So in my case, it's going to be the next 13. So we'll do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So go to that size that you wanted, and then when you're ready, you're just going to turn. So you can see it's just a little section here, and let's begin the second row. So just flip it over real quick, and you're going to go back in this direction. So this is the neckline, so we want a nice taper, and it's not going to be very tall. And you're just going to start, and you're going to begin, and you can just chain one and put a half double crochet in the first one if you want to. Okay? And then it says to place in... Uh, one half double crochet two together using the next two stitches. So using the next two, you'll do uh, a two together half double crochet. So wrap the going in, pull through, going into the next one, wrap and in, go through, and then you're going to pull through everything. And now you just put two together. And now you're just going to whip across and just half double crochet all the way across. So every time you go back from the neckline to the edge, you can do that half double crochet that you need to do. I don't know how many rows I'm gonna need at this moment because we have to rely on the distance of what it was from the very base of the sweater to the height that it's suggesting in the pattern. So I actually did an extra two rows because I thought I needed to, but in actual fact, I only had to do these two rows. So I, I did just the piece and then I went back. It is currently now measuring 27 inches, which is the size that I needed for myself. So now I'm going to end my yarn right here and so now that I know that there's only two rows on this side, when I go to start the next side, it's gotta only be two rows as well for balance. So I'm just gonna end my yarn and I'll weave this in later. And now we're gonna begin the left shoulder here on the back panel. So I'm gonna give you a piece of advice that's not in the pattern. I have a tendency sometimes to get screwed up and you have to skip amount of the stitches that it says skip the first 23 and then you're gonna start doing your shaping. Okay. That's all good and dandy, but my problem is, is that sometimes I can be off a little bit and this count doesn't make sense. So when we did this side here, we knew that there was a total of 14 stitches, okay? So we, we started the first one and then we stitched the amount of stitches we needed. So it was either 11, 12, 13, 14, or 16. So plus the first stitch and that count that gave you the number. So in my case, it was 14. What I'm going to do here, instead of just skipping over the 23 stitches, I'm gonna count from the edge and just count 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So here, that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm just gonna grab my yarn and go right here in the 14th one. You should know I just counted this across. It was the right amount of stitches, but I'm giving you that tip anyway. So we're now going to chain one. Okay, I joined it, chain one, and then half double crochet in the first. Okay, and toss the yarn to the other side, which will be the back of the project. And then just half double crochet yourself all the way to the edge, and this will be row number one. Okay, going right into the edge one, and when we turn, we're gonna do row number two. And row number two, we're gonna do that decrease at the neckline. Okay, so this time it's gonna be at the end of this row here, and you're going to just chain up one, and you're gonna half double crochet yourself until you see the third last stitch. So we're just gonna carry on, and the third last stitch before the end is what you're looking for. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that. Okay, so I have one, two, three. So I got two more to go. And then I'm going to do my half double crochet two together. So the next two I'm gonna to put together. And then I'm gonna to half double crochet in the last one. 
and that just eliminated out a stitch so that you'll have the taper happening on this side. So this is the second row. We know that that's all we need for this side. And then we're gonna trim our yarn and then we're going to begin then working on the front panel. And the front panel will have a little more of this section here at the top of the neckline. So let's put this away and let's get our, our front panel ready. And we're gonna start the left shoulder. So now we're gonna turn our attention to the front panel and we're gonna start with the left shoulder very much how we did it before. And you're going to notice the, the information that we're gonna do. So you're gonna half double crochet each of the next 15, 16, 17, 18, or 20 stitches. So that you see that it's a different count than it was before. So it's gonna be um, that. So we're just gonna pay attention to that. So then we're just gonna work through the steps that you have. And you're gonna just half double crochet even until it measures, uh, it measures the same as the back. So you may wanna use the back panel, just lay it on top of it to be able to get the size. But the, the size that you had, if you recall, was back over here, okay? So we're gonna try left shoulder, front panel, next. So let's begin the left shoulder in the shaping. So, and this is the front panel. I'm saying that for myself for tutorial organization reasons. So I'm gonna chain up one and I'm going to put in a half double crochet in the first. So if you did the chain two, that will count as the first. So we're going to then do a half double crochet in either the next 15, 16, 17, 18, or 20. You decide, I'm gonna do 17. So I'm gonna count those out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And I said it's 17 for me. So go to the size that you wanted, and then we're gonna turn our work and do row number two. So turning our work, we're gonna do something unique. Remember how we did the slip stitching before? We're gonna do that again, and we're gonna slip stitch the first three in a row. So one, so we're gonna, it's gonna taper the edge. So one, two, and three. And this is where you're going to start. And so you're going to you can chain one and half double crochet in the first or chain two and that will count, you decide. And then you are gonna half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the other side. Okay, so please do this for row number two. When you get to the other side, you're just gonna turn your work and let's do row number three. So this time you have to do a certain amount of stitches. So you're going to chain up two or chain one depending on what you wanna do and just do the first half double crochet, chain two counts as one, just in case you do it that way. And now you're gonna half double crochet yourself until the last two stitches remain. Okay, so you don't really need to count, you can just look for it and leave the last two stitches untouched and do that for row number three. And I'll be right back on the other side in a moment. So you're going all the way across, you're leaving the last two stitches empty and that's what you'll have. So let's do row number four. Turn your work and do number four. And you're going to either chain two or you can do your chain one and half double crochet in the first. And then the next one is gonna be uh, two together, half double crochet over the next two stitches. I really like how they put this into the project that it's not on the edge because it, it makes the edge a lot more solid. So that was really smart. So you're just going to then half double crochet yourself all the way to the other side. So once you're to the other side, go all the way. And now you have to get to a certain amount of inches in order to match the back panel. Okay, so let's turn and work and let's talk about that on the pattern. So now we have to go and do just half double crochet on the uh, back and forth until you get to the size that matches the back panel. So you may wanna put the two together and then just stop. So you're just gonna chain one and then half double crochet in each or do your chain two and then just skip the first one and then half double crochet. And you're just gonna go back and forth. And I want you to make a note that when you finish that, how many rows you just did so that you'll stay even. So grab the back panel that you already have done and you can just lay it on top, make sure that it looks the same and we're going to do that next. So here's the back panel here. I'm gonna lay the other one that I'm doing right now. So this is the height that I want and I'm just gonna match it to the back. 
section. And so you can see that it's not quite hitting the top of this here. here. So I'm going to count the amount of rows, one, two, and three. So I need about three more rows to get to the height of that. And I'm going to do that just back and forth with the half double crochet. And then I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to finish off my yarn. And then we'll start on the right shoulder on the other side of this in just a moment. So as I'm just finishing off this side of the edge, what I want to do is leave an extra long tail because I'm going to use that tail to uh, sew the back to this when we're ready. Okay, so it saves you having to start new yarn later. You can just leave it on and then you can sew when you're ready. So going right to the other side. Okay, so let's just grab my scissors. And leave long enough tail that you can use to sew. You're better to be more generous than you are to be cheap. Okay, so just pull it through. And now we're gonna go to the other shoulder, the, the right shoulder on the front panel next. We're now going to do the right shoulder right here and we'll work our way and then you're gonna half double crochet back and forth until you get to the same height as the existing one here in the background. So like the back panel, what I wanted to do is that you can skip amount of stitches. It says to skip the first 15 stitches, but if your panel is off in any way, you might actually have your neck off 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 to the side so if you look at the stitch count on the left shoulder on uh, the first row you're going to notice is that there was a count at the end of it so there was either 16 17 18 19 or 21 in my case there was a total of 18 so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just count back and I'm going to just count to the one I want so in my case it was 18 so just one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Eighteen is right where I want to start. I'm looking at the right side of the work, the front side, and that's where I want to start my journey. So I'm going to begin and I'm going to just attach it and I'm going to just chain one and then just half double crochet as I normally have been doing and I'm going to go all the way to the other side for row number one. Okay. And if you want to check your counts, you can have the amount of stitches that you should have skipped over should be the amount that you're skipping over in the middle. For full transparency, I was supposed to be skipping over 15 here. I only have 11. I don't know why. Maybe the law of physics, the cat, the dog, Daniel, I don't know. So this is my whole point for just counting back on this side to make sure that it's going to match on both sides. And so I'm not so worried about that because this is directly in the middle. So something may have happened to me uh, here in the journey. And am I gonna worry about it at this point? No, I'm too far into the project to really spend that much time on it. So I'm still gonna do this side, as I mentioned. So I've now just come across, I'm gonna turn my work, do row number two. So I'll do my chain one and I'll do my half double crochet. So what I'm going to do is half double crochet until there's two stitches left. I'm not going to crochet those two stitches. I'm just gonna stop and then turn my work and we'll begin number three. I'll see at the end of this section right here, row number three. Okay, let's do row number two. You just chain up one and I'm gonna put my half double crochet in. So what I'm going to do is just half double crochet myself and stop when there's two stitches left and then I'll pick you up on row number three in just a moment. So I'm stopping two stitches short and then I'm gonna turn my work and we're gonna begin number three. Row number three. We are going to slip stitch in the first three stitches. So count the first one that you're in. So one, two, and three. And then you can do a chain one and half double crochet in that one. And then half double crochet in all of them all the way to the other side. Okay, and this will be number three. And we'll start number four in a moment. Coming all the way to the end of number three, let's turn our work and do row number four. So we're going to, I'll do chain one and half double crochet in the first one here. And then it says to um, half double crochet in each and then um, to the last two stitches uh, remain. And then we're gonna do a half double crochet two together at the end, so. So the last two stitches, put them, the last two as two together. Now the remaining of the rows, we're gonna talk about that. So if you recall, I measured it at this point and there was three rows left. So to see where this is ending, 
I want to have to be ending over here as well. So I'm going to do my last three rows because I've already measured it from before. And we are just going to put one half double crochet in each of the stitches back and forth, no additions or subtractions, and do the final rows in order to get to the size that you want because you've already measured it once. You probably don't have to do it twice, but make sure it looks even. So do this for the remaining of the front panel now. So I'm doing my last stitch. You can see that I'm finishing here. I ended here, so I'm on the same side when I go to finish, and I also have the same heights. Okay, so all of this, even though it looks jagged, will straighten out once you do your final collar. Leave an extra long tail, and you'll use that tail to sew this to the opposite side, which will be the back panel when you're ready. So what we're going to do now is that we're gonna talk sleeves. Um, basically, how you started was something we already know, and then we're going to begin the sleeve work in just a moment. So let's talk sleeves. By the time you see this, this information right here is going to change. The information itself is not changing. The format and the way the reading is going to change. So Svetlana and I worked through this yesterday, the design team at Yarnspirations. And what we've done is that Yarnspirations tends to uh, spell out stuff a lot more detailed. This is an old pattern, so it's been re kind of revived. And so what we did is that we came up with some changes to make this a lot easier to read. So I'm going to show you the real sample here, and then I will walk you through verbally on what to do. So here's the sleeve. I've done both of them already off camera. And you start off just like you did with the very base of the front and the back panel. So you'll have the information and it will state in the pattern when you have this is that it's going to be a chaining of 33, just like you see here. You'll do the foundation row just like you did it on the base of the sweater of the front and the back. And then you're gonna do it so it measures two and a half inches. What I would recommend to you, it's gotta be the same distance as the back and the front panel. So grab the, either the back or the front panel, just lay it over top and make sure it looks the same. From here, you're going to then build it out once you have that done, and once this is done, you're going to then start increasing. And that's where the change of instructions will happen on the way that it's presented. We'll, we'll cover that next. Once the base is done, you're going to change to the larger hook, so the base ribbing, and then you're gonna do the first row of chain two. If you wanna do that chain one and half double crochet in the first, you can. So the skipping in the first is what that means. And then you're gonna half double crochet in each to the end, and then you're gonna turn. So all the sizes are going to happen for all of this at this moment. Row number two, you're going to chain two. You're gonna skip the first half double crochet, just like you did before. And then you're gonna half double crochet in each to the end of the row. Okay, so that skipping is the chain two equals the stitch. I find that a little bit confusing if you don't if you ask if you if you know what I mean. In row number three, this is when we're going to start increasing it. So you're going to chain two and then half double crochet in the first half double crochet. So if you were doing it the way that I was showing before, is that I would chain one and put two half double crochets in the first stitch and then one half double crochet in each, but the very last stitch has to have two half double crochets. So it's gonna cause it to start going out like this. So you're down here with the ribbing and it's going to start building out on an angle. The next row then is just chain two, which counts as the first one. And then you're just going to half double crochet all the way across. So rows number three and four are going to be the repeat. So in three, we put two stitches into the first stitch, two into the last of the row. And in row number four, we just did a half double crochet in each across. And you were going to repeat the, the rows the two rows either 7, 11, 13, 17 or 17 more times. In my case it was 13 for the large. So once I had that done this is what the stitch count is going to be after you have that section completely done. So what I did for myself on my own notes because we worked on this together is that I wrote the numbers 1 to 13 and every time I did a pair of rows number 3 and 4 I just clicked it off so I could be able to count it. And I made a note that um, the of the information to make myself, uh, make it a lot easier for myself to do that. So then you're gonna come back to the pattern and then for the small, extra small, all the way to large only, you're gonna have two rows and it's just chain one, skip the first one and half double crochet in each. So it's just a regular half double crochet row two times. And for those sizes, 
So for all the sizes then from this point, you're gonna do and do the increase again. So you'll chain two, put a half double crochet in the first. So it's essentially two into the first stitch, half double crochet into the rest, and two into the very end. The next three rows are just regular half double crochet back and forth. And what's gonna happen is that you'll have a total of four rows, okay? So when it says repeat the last four rows, this is what this is. It's this row plus these three. And so then the small, the, the medium and the large is repeating the last three rows a certain amount of times. Okay, and then the next row, you're going to just chain one and sorry, chain one, or you can do your chain two and just do a half double crochet. And you keep doing it back and forth until you get to the measurement that is stating here. So this is the small, medium, large, extra large, um, and then three extra, up to three extra large. So you have the sizes that you have in order to, to make sense of that. So what I'm gonna tell you is just to go through the instructions and just check it off. Just keep a mental note right here. I'm making sure that if you're doing the extra large or, or two to uh, three extra large, you just ignore this instruction and then you just move along right here, okay? And then you just continue to do the instruction over and over and over. So with the uh, other larger sizes, like the three extra large that you have, the reason why you're not increasing it is because this is going to take you to that information of getting it to the final width. So when you look at it from this perspective, if you keep increasing the width, then it would, what, we would, what it would mean is that the extra large would be even super wider and it would be way too wide up here. So basically the repeating is just helping you get to the taper that you need. So I'm gonna ask that you do both of your sleeves just the way you see it, check it off on your list and just weave in your ends and we're going to move on to putting this together next. So what I'm doing now is that I've laid the sample down the right sides are facing down. So when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the wrong side of the project. So this is what, be, what my body would be touching. So what I'm going to do is take extra pieces of yarn that I can clearly see, and I'm going to join the pieces together with bow tie knots. And I'm gonna use that to be able to push things together. It may be harder to see from that point of view, but what I'm doing is I'm going through the top of the shoulders first, and I'm just going to take my crochet hook and match the outside stitch of the one piece and the outside stitch to the other. And then just drag the yarn through. And then I'm just tying a bow tie. So I want to join all the pieces together using this format so that when you look at it, you can see that everything is just temporarily, and if something is wrong, now is your time to kind of tweak or adjust if you need to, and it's a way of just kind of getting an overall look. For the sleeves, I want to attach it at this corner here, and I'm just going to match. And I'm going to attach it on this corner up here. So keeping it relatively flat that you can see, you're just going to follow it straight across. So just look straight down on it. And I'm going to pull this in to this one right here. So now what we have to do is we have to fill in this corner right here. And so I'm just going to match it out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just doing a count as long as it's the same on both sides. Because I'm just temporarily securing things, if it doesn't look right, I'm going to know immediately. So I just count to ten because I just guessed a number. And then I'm going to do ten on the other side just to see. So now this will allow the sleeves to turn in that corner. And what I would do if I were you, I would just like, you see the center point in here, just bring it together about the halfway point. So when you're sewing, it'll be relatively even. 
it's possible in the distance that you start sewing one side faster than the other. Okay, so that's done. So now I want to repeat the other side. So what's going to happen in just a few moments, I'll show you, but I'm going to put this on the other side, all these uh, little pieces in, and then we'll take a look from that point. So now that I have all the pieces together, I am going to just fold it and see if it makes sense. Okay, so this is going to be the wrong sides. And so this would be the good side of the work once it's ready. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sew all of the pieces together that so far, I'm not going to worry about the edges here. What I want to do is get all these guys secured in first. I'm going to start off with my shoulders and then I'm going to work my way down here. So because I've been marling and double stranding, I want to use two of the, of the strands at the same time in order for strength. If you did leave any loose ends that were really long, you can also use those to sew as well. So I'm going to begin doing the shoulders next. So if you left any long strands, you can use those instead of starting new yarn. And I wanna do my shoulders. So you're just gonna do a whip stitch. The other stuff you have to evenly space out. These ones you can match stitch to stitch. So what I'm going to do is just go from one side directly to the other. I don't know if you can see that from that point of view, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the stitch markers yet. I need to have them hold into position. So once I'm there, I come back to the other one and then I just move along down the stitch work like this. So this side that I'm currently working on will be the wrong side of the work, so the inside of the sweater. So the, all these seam lines will appear on the inside of your project. And you're gonna move all the way down the row in that manner. What I wanna do just in case if there's a differential in the stitch work, of the counts, the where you put your stitch markers is where you have to finish. So if you have to jig it a little bit and make it work, then do so. Just e equally space it and come right to the end. As soon as you're in the last one, you can remove your stitch marker out. Once you're confirmed, then just secure the end on this side, create a knot. The knot will stay on the inside of your sweater. If you want to tie more of a knot, you can. Just again, favor this side because it's the wrong side. But we don't want that loose end coming out anywhere, so we're going to then just drag it through some stitch work, but do not go to the good side of the work. So just stay shallow enough to let the tail just rest on the inside. And you're gonna do that then for all your joints. And I'm gonna go back and forth and weave it in a total of three times. And once you're confirmed, you can just get your scissors and secure that out. Any loose ends that you may have had in the project, whether it's a um, changing of out of yarn, you just wanna do the same practice of just weaving it on this side of the work only. So just go nice and shallow and don't let that needle hit the good side of the work because then you'll see it. And the trick is, is to go back and forth at least three times. Okay, so now what I want you to do is continue to join the rest of your pieces together and then we'll talk from that point. So I now have my shoulders complete. I'm now going to start on this side here and work my way across use those stitch markers to say, okay, this section needs to be in this section, this has to be together, this. So you don't want it to suddenly be that the, the whole thing is out of alignment. So use the stitch markers as your guide and you can remove them as you go in order to make it work. Okay, so just going across like I showed you before. I know it's hard to see from that angle. 
Um, it's a really big project because it's for me. But I usually do this kind of stuff on smaller projects. But I, I wanted this for myself today, so I'm being kind of selfish. Okay, so I'm going to join it and you can remove the first stitch marker out and keep moving those out and then keep jumping and watch the stitch markers and make sure everything aligns as you go. Because I had to go into the side and I did the chain one and half double crochet in the first stitch instead of chain two equals a stitch, you're going to notice that, that the edging is a lot more solid. And so on this side, I'm matching the stitches on the side but on this, on this edge, there is no stitches, just, just the side, and I'm just kind of grabbing it in where it makes sense. Okay, once you're all the way across, it'll look good, and then you're just gonna secure the loose ends um, like I showed you before. So just weaving them back and forth, and let them tie itself into a knot, and don't you dare secure to the outside of, the, of here. So you're actually still looking at the inside of your sweater. So back and forth three times, to secure the loose end. Okay, so both of my arms are now sewn in. So I want to fold this in a way that I'm still looking at the inside out. Okay, like that. Okay. And what I want to do then is that I want to secure the sides and also the arms with the stitch markers to be able to hold it at the right spots. And then I want to just kind of look at this and just kind of maybe one, two, three, maybe three more in. Just prevents me from misaligning the look. So I'm gonna do the same all the way down the arms and I'm also gonna do the same on the opposite side while I'm here at the same moment. And you could probably try it on at this point and see how big it's going to be and hopefully it's still hopefully it fits. I have everything now finished and I'm still looking at the inside out. So I wanna put outside right. So we're looking at the good side then. We're gonna head on down to the studio and we're gonna finish the collar next. So we're here up on the collar and we need to do the neckband and it's going to go all the way around and we need to equally space as best you can 65 double crochets. So what I would highly recommend though, make sure that you get an odd number just in case something goes wrong. You're going to join to where it's joined at the top and you're going to begin and you're going to work in front of you. So you should be looking at the right side of the work of the project and then just I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to put a double crochet in there. Okay, so I'm going to do what I was doing with the half double crochets. So then I'm going to just equally make it look good. I'm going around. Make sure you are using the smaller hook. Uh, I didn't already say that, but you should. And just equally get it to go all the way around. The ribbing that you'll be doing in the next uh, rotation is going to help shrink that in a little bit more. So do you see how I kind of just did that and it pulled it open? Be conscious when you go in that you go into like a chain area, but not to an open space and it will change your enjoyment all that much more. Okay, so just equally space out or get 65 double crochets all the way around. When you get all the way back around, just join it to the beginning double crochet that you started with. We're now going to begin the next round, which will conclude then all the instructions, but then you have to just repeat uh, what you already know in order to um, have the ribbing. So if you want the, the neckline to be much uh, wider, then you just keep on going around and around, and then it's only a technically an inch and a half. So to begin, you are going to just chain one, and around the first double crochet, you are going to put in a front post double crochet. It's exactly what you did on the cuffs and also the bottom. And then the next one has to be a back post. And you're going to do that all the way around, just alternating between the two stitches. And this will help it space out even uh, in a more even manner as well. I'll be right back. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm just matching exactly what I see. And then I'm just going to join it with the first front post double crochet. So I want to keep that going. So I'm just going to chain up one and just do one more round, just matching exactly what I see. So it's front post, keep it front post. This is the back post, keep it back post. 
and etc. So if you want to make the collar bigger, you can just keep adding more rounds. You may want to just decrease a few stitches uh, here and there just to tighten it up a little bit if you want to, but I'll leave that to your hands to be able to experiment with that because I don't have any um, definite answers for that. I, I would just play as I go. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm all the way back around. You'll just slip stitch it to the top of the first one. So I've done it as per the instructions. If you want to try it on and see how you do, then what you can do if you want it a little bit bigger, then just keep on doing a few more rounds. You may want to do some two togethers once in a while um, in order to bring it more narrow to the neck, but you don't want to make sure that you go too narrow that you can't get your head through. So at this point, if you're following the pattern, just uh, fasten off at this point, weave in your ends, and you're good to go.